Shop. We started tearing apart, and, and uh, anyway, long story short, I moved out to the beach, uh, put that little Dakota in the garage where it sat for about six years. Everything else was right. easy, but I'll really put that 360 back in Dakota. Everything goes your way. He's got a truck weighing about like 2,000 pounds total. You know, he just never got around to it. Wanted to, but he's never got there. Yeah, it cuts down on some of the time. Don't get my face. It's like an aircraft. It's probably a trick. It's the setup. Because if you ever have to get out of it, it's done. A lot of work on it for a fellow. Shoot them out of the camera. By the time you get your foot off of it, it's done. It's He put it in the trailer. Uh, probably the only reason the trailer didn't blow over is there's no car in it. But he lost his motorcycle, he lost the uh, 68 you know, Camaro race car, he lost all kinds of stuff. That's a problem, man. Anytime you get out, you do stuff like that. That's a problem. I mean, I've watched it for 20 years, put it in the car, build it, tear it apart, sit three or four years, put the stuff back into it, build it, and tear it apart. Uh, yeah, and I we'd go to Clarksville, we'd go all over the place, but I'd you know, take pictures of the turn basic turning back in the day. He used to use a light. <laughs> hey, I love it. <laughs> just coincidentally, got him off the line, you know, right on Christmas Eve, right after he took off. And, uh, the picture in the rear tire. Probably when they came to use up. You've got to be careful with the pins. He had the shop. He had the mayor's shop. Yeah. We're not used to that on this end. That's just I had some pictures. I don't know what happened. We were up in. Uh,
this is saying that it used to, uh, Adam used to work for him, and then he was called in and uh, forced to arrest him. Oh, really? Yeah. So Adam was going to get the guy's gun. Oh, before we get started, I'm meeting you now, I'd like to have our chief police leave it, the police leave it, and I'll say a prayer for it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, thanking you for this great city that we live in. We know we've been through a lot in the last few weeks, good Lord, but you've been right there with us and we know it. We ask that you would continue to be with us tonight as we do the work of the citizens in the city. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I now call this meeting of the Fort St. Joe City Commission to order. Uh, update you, uh, we've issued over 150 permits uh, to, to date after the post storm. Uh, we've also uh, we've got our substantial damage process uh, finalized and so we're able to get those letters going out. Um, the, uh, we also started a Facebook page with daily citizen no notification and uh, the last thing I'd like to update is our post uh, safety assessments uh, were completed at the beginning of last week. There's me. We have uh, we have an inspector in the office for answering questions at full time, and uh, everything that's coming in is getting done on a daily basis. So, but you're the only inspector right now. Well, I got I got others I can use. When I we talked about it as as needed. I can get them here within a couple hours. So, mm -hmm. Willie, I know we talked uh, about. Uh, I was informed that we were having an issue with demo permits, mm -hmm. and. Not, not issuing them. I know we've talked since then. You want to explain that how the, what's happening there with the demo? Yeah, there's no uh, there's no issue with that. What we were trying to do is finalize this substantial damage letter. Uh, we were just uh, getting uh, all the appropriate letter drafted. We started at the end of last week getting it drafted and getting it approved, and and so now we were able to issue those <coughs> as people come in um, and with no no hiccups. So what about? Yeah, if, if the uh, insulation, which it, assuming the insulation was damaged, you have to come get one for the insulation and, and what it takes to repair the home. Um, it's mainly for that insulation energy inspection is the main purpose. We have to look at that to make sure that their R rating is what it should be before they put the sheetrock. Is that in uh, comparison to the county? Does the county require what you just explained? I, I do not know what the county requires. I just know what the building code 2017 edition requires us to do. <coughs> if you were informed that the county was not requiring that permit, what would be your feelings on was the county <coughs> not, uh, doing what was required? Because if you'll remember, the one thing that I kept uh, bringing up over and over is to make absolutely sure that the county building department and the city building The sheetrock is a uh, sheetrock. We're uh, talking about insulation, and insulation is totally different. So the sheetrock, uh, if it's <coughs> if it was, they're just replacing sheetrock that wasn't flooded, and they're not having to replace their insulation. That's one thing. But if they're having to mess with the insulation, then 
that's a that's a required inspection. The insulation. Of, what about the interior walls? There, there wouldn't be any insulation there, correct? Correct. If the if they did put insulation, that would be sound protection. So, right. but the exterior walls that you had insulation on, if it was damaged or moisture or whatever, then it would have to be removed. Therefore, an inspection of its replacement would be required. Yes, sir. Same thing. The, the only sheet rock that we have to go see is in between, uh, like a dwelling, where you have a renter on each side, or commercial. So that's that's the only. It's none of these residentials that we're requiring it because of the sheet rock. It's only because of the insulation. Yeah. Any other questions? Along the line of, uh, <coughs> more of these and things as far as their permits. Uh, we're issuing the. Uh, Temporary structures, yes. We, uh, I know even the gas station got one there uh, for the uh, Exxon because we're trying to get them power hopefully by tomorrow and, or the next day and get that gas station going. What was the, uh, when we waived those fees for some type of initial inspection, what, what exactly was that, Jim, that we waived and we're still waiving it now? I believe that was a life safety inspection, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the life the, safety the meter base, the, ma the original meter bases where we went around and looked at all the meter bases right after the storm? That was yeah. that was what we did. So if, we, if the city chose to waive inspections, uh, do we even have the authority to do that? Being that it's based on somebody has to certify that the building is being built properly, correct? Correct. Uh, yes, it, the, if it's within the building code permit, then the city could could not uh, certify that. Yes, sir. Planning board recommendation. We did have a planning board meeting last Tuesday, Mayor. Uh, one of the items that we were trying to address was um, accessory structures. We had several in the community that were destroyed uh, due to Hurricane Michael. So we got a recommendation from the planning board. Uh, it's there for your review tonight. Uh, basically, the, uh, the planning board recommendation was uh, to the city commission to allow non-conforming accessory structures. These are there. Most of these may are within the setback lines. We had people that had sheds, carports, those type of things that were in the setbacks. They got destroyed by the storm. So we're trying to find out how do we handle those moving forward. Do we require those <coughs> folks to have to come in and, and go through the full process of a special exception or hardship variant? Or can we give some kind of um, exception to be able to help out? And this is what the motion said. To allow non-conforming accessory structure with a prior permit or sufficient evidence with prior structure existence and footprints, footprints such as Google Earth would not require a new variant for special exception. Also, no charge will be required for anyone with a prior permit, but a fee would be required for those who did not have a prior permit, and the duration of this special exception will be for six months. And it did pass 5 0 from the planning board. That's the recommendation from the planning board to uh, grant this. The motion to accept. Is that a motion for Commissioner Palmer? Uh, second for discussion. Second for Commissioner Palmer for discussion. Um, I would, the one thing I wanted to mention, it, it's six months, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's structures currently there and also in the setbacks as well? Yes, there would be ones in the setback right now. So that would be, that would be the caveat there that you would be allowing structures that are in the setback that may or may not have had previous permits but what you would have is you would at least have either have a permit and those would be free or you would have a picture google or some other uh, measure to show that there was an existing structure there. And if they don't have a permit they, they just buy the permit they would buy the permit 
and they would show where they had a sufficient evidence that the building was there. How much is that for a room? Uh, is it 50 bucks? Do you have an idea what it is for the accessory, short. accessory structures? 40 or 50 bucks, yeah. 44 bucks, whatever. And, and the burden of proving that they had a, a previous permit would be on who? We would do everything we can to, to try to help the homeowner, but more likely that's going to fall on the homeowner, yes, sir. Is anybody from the public <coughs> want to speak on this? Come on up. Jim Sickles, Bridgeport Lane. Uh, the only thing, I was in the planning meeting also. Uh, everything that Jim said is what we discussed and approved. The only thing I noticed now is that we probably need to add conforming or non-conforming buildings instead of just non-conforming because they'll still have to show that they had the building. If they had a permit, they still get it for free. If they did not have a permit, they'll still have to get one. That'll help in future years if we have any other issues. The permit will show that they had a permit to build it and we shouldn't have to go through all this. But right now it only reads non-conforming buildings. Who wrote the uh, recommendation? Was it from the committee? And we didn't write this part. We discussed the part of non-conforming. And like I said, we didn't discuss conforming buildings that want to be replaced but at the same time I think for us to control it for a later date if something does happen we go through the same process whether it's conforming or non-conforming Jim and I were just mentioning this maybe I'm confused but if it's conforming then you wouldn't need a variance so we're only talking about non-conforming which would typically go through the application process but you'd still but need a permit on. But if you're if you're non-conforming, you would already meet the land development regulation. You would just go get a permit as normal, so you wouldn't have to follow this rule. You'd already be within the guidelines. Right, of the land but they get a permit for free if they had one existing. If they did not have one existing, they'd have to pay for a permit. I see what he, what he's. I think what you're referring to is the ones that. Well. It basically says if you had already had a permit before, then you would get it for free. Correct, but we're only addressing non-conforming structures. We're not addressing the conforming structures that were out there. All I'm saying is to add a caveat for con conforming or non-conforming. I don't think it would. It would, it would and that, that way it clears it up. If somebody built one conforming but never had a permit, they're going to have to buy one now. And that way, later on, we have the same issue. A building goes down, they can go back to the building department, it's going to show they had a permit to build it, and it was conforming. That's all it's going to do. My motion will now reflect conforming and non-conforming structures. All right. Is second? I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition to the motion? Motion carries 3-0. PSJRA update. Uh, we don't have, I don't think Mr. Kennedy's here tonight or uh, Commissioner Ashford, so I do yeah, not have anything to move on. Move on. Okay. <coughs> this will be Mr. Attorney. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner. <coughs> no substantive updates at this time. I would um, inform the board that Neil Dunn's office, I live here across here, Neil Dunn's office has reached out about having uh, what they label mobile office hours here in the city of Port St. Joe. Um, and in her conversation my <coughs> Jim, um, she is going to use this building uh, starting next Tuesday, the 27th from 10 to 2, um, to try and uh, help the citizens here in the city in any way that Mr. Dunn can, and she'll facilitate that through the liaison person for that. So she'll be here 10 to 2 on 11-27-2018, and she asked that I um, bring that up for the board so the public will be aware. All right. Sounds good. Nothing for <coughs> All right, sir. Jim, back to you. Yes, sir. The first item we have under old business is the CDBG grant update. Mr. Bruce Fowler is here to give us an update tonight. Good evening. As you know, 
from my earlier visits here last summer that we had slim chances of getting the grant uh, approved. And as, as scoring came in, we came in at about the bottom third. And that's probably the difference in that last two categories that we didn't match uh, in terms of dollars per household. Um, and it's not much of a remedy for that. I, I went this afternoon to look at the houses over in the Robbins North Garrison Park area to ensure that maybe that might not be a suitable area to try to do gravity sewers. And again, you have the issue of vacant lots and, or empty buildings, and th or there's only houses on one side of the street. So we're looking at the, at the outlook of probably not having a traditionally sewered fix where you have to replace the pipe and repave the patch because it's cost too much to repave it. That's one of the biggest hard parts. Um, spoke with your engineer just before the meeting and it might be in the city's best interest to consider TVing the lines to find out which lines uh, are amenable to being lined where you don't dig <coughs> up the pipe, you drag a breaker through the pipe and break the existing pipe and pull in a polyethylene sleeve. And that's uh, basically like how they redid my neighborhood in Tallahassee four or five years ago. Um, didn't have to do any repaving except patching some around the manholes. Um, I believe you have the density to pay for that except that there's no reimbursement for that upfront <coughs> cost of having to TV it. Um, ball parking, we're guessing at forty-five dollars to $50,000 possibly to do the TVing effort in all of the unsewered areas of Northport St. Joe. Uh, to find out how many of those areas might fit in the next project or a next further or further project, um, <coughs> but it doesn't look as if there's any areas that we you know that we did that we looked at when we're trying to put the other one together, where you would have the density of houses per linear foot of sewer to go through and what we had been doing with the rest of enough subdivision, the housing the prices have gone up enough that it's just too expensive to do it that way anymore. Um, and you know you can discuss it with engineering and budgeting and stuff. I think there there may be pockets of money for that effort, but that effort would have to be done prior to developing the project. Um, the next grant application cycle. I talked to Patrick Howard today. The next cycle should open in January, late January, and it would be running for 45 days. So that might be too soon, but it might be you can get something done by then. The next cycle would be, they would hope to be back on schedule to have a cycle that opened in September because they're just trying to catch up right now. <coughs> um, I know it's not great news that we didn't get it. I, I was kind of thinking, well, I might get lucky and would get it or, you know, as they went through their um, site visit processes, some of the applicants would get kicked out. Uh, but Mr. Howard informed me that probably wasn't going to happen. They even took the money from economic development and there weren't any applications in that, that field this cycle put all that in and we're still just you know below that line um, and I would have been here earlier to when, I, when I first found out about it but in September I had doctor's orders to stay home by the time I got through with that <coughs> um, Michael came to visit you had other things on your mind um, so that's where we are with, with doing sewer in Northport St. Joe we're probably going to need another technology and I believe in one of the next meetings Clay might be able to tell you how much that might cost to do some field work to find out exactly how many areas, how many linear feet have to be done still and what those linear foot costs are and advise you on how to, you know, secure that service if you wanted to go that way. So you think, what you're saying is you think it'd be beneficial for us to video everything and then submit with that? With that, that technology. That possibly help us? That would probably get you in the in the fundable range, because then your linear cost, or your your costs per household, would be much lower. And that was the one category we took a severe 75 point hit. We couldn't get to that next funding, that next series when we went from minus 75 to zero. <coughs> so that's an advisement. You know, that's you know another situation I can come down the next time if Clay wants to present that information and we can talk about what areas might be. Um, and what a next project might look like if we did that. But first, you would have to have the information on, you know, 
know what that consultant cost might be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, for the old very sorry we didn't get it, but yeah. I, you know it wasn't extremely helpful. We did as much as we could last time. Maybe next time, right? Mayor, can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, with FEMA, we were indicated there may be some CDBG money available now. I believe it was CDBG R, I think, is was a, the termination. Is a, um, I asked Patrick about that, too. There is a category called uh, Disaster Recovery, the DR grant. DR, okay. And the DRs, uh, he's not expecting anything until sometime in January. Now, I don't know what kinds <coughs> of things you could spend that on. Uh, it might be in any one of your pockets. Um, but we'll see, because you may have a lot of different needs. And when they came out with Irma funding uh, and Matthew funding, it was a lot of money. Uh, and certainly, we hit the international news waves with Michael. Everybody knows that Michael, that Florida got really hurt. Um, so I don't know how much money they're going to allocate and or when the announcement will be. But when it does, <coughs> they'll certainly be able to report on what kinds of um, projects and, and talk with the city manager and you know, see where we're going to go. But I'd be happy to represent you there too. Okay. Just keep our eye on that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been checking HUD twice a week. Thank you, Bruce. All right. Thank you, yes, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, Mayor, on to Hurricane Michael to kind of give an update. Uh, we did have a conversation with Ashbridge the other day. They are starting the process of going back through the alleys. Watertown has been cleaned up. There is still work to be done, but uh, they made significant progress. Uh, we do need to get the state folks to get back down to work on our main corridors. That's what our big focus point's been this past week to try to prepare for the holiday. So we'll continue to try to get um, the state folks to work on that. Also tonight, I think you have Ms. Brenda Gustin. I think she's here tonight. I don't know if she wants to give an update or. Hey, while well, she's coming <coughs> up, I have a question about Ash Creek. Do we have a contact with them as finding out what roads they are done with and which roads they're about to go and make a second run on. We do have a contact. His name is Dan. Uh, we did call him the other day. Uh, specifically, the indications are right now they're going to be here for a while. I have not heard an end date. I'll try to get some more information if you like to try to find out specific areas and, and where they're working. I think it would be helpful if we actually had a <coughs> try to get some uh, clarification. And, and when you speak to them, if you would mention uh, the houses right in there at the corner of 16th and McClellan. I rode by there today and there is a massive pile of debris where they cleaned out an entire house that needs to be picked up. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, we did have a meeting with uh, Mayor Patterson and uh, lawyer Al Britton, um, your lawyer, your lawyer um, on housing uh, last week, uh, just to give an update, um, 104 families have actually qualified for housing, 72 of those are owners, 32 of those are renters, um, they've already had their site inspections done. We'll just wait for um, moving the actual uh, trailers, RVs, and houses and manufactured homes over. Um, some of the things that people need to understand before we'll bring a temporary home or a temporary vehicle onto the property is that it has to be free of debris. Uh, we have to have access to get in on the property. Um, we will not clear debris to bring the uh, unit in. It has to have utilities already available to it. It's the homeowner's responsibility to actually get those utilities hooked up. 
keys will not be given to the homeowners until those utilities can be shown to be working. Uh, the homeowner will have to sign a housing agreement with FEMA on what the use of this uh, uh, temporary home is. FEMA will also do a complete inspection before they let the people move in to make sure everything's working. We also uh, will be checking with the homeowners uh, at first uh, every couple weeks, then it'll go to monthly. They have to show continued progress on what they're working on. Um, just as a comparison, we have 16 homes going in in Weewa, uh, Kitchka. So just to talk about that, we identified 360 homes originally that would qualify. And the reason it doesn't match up is some people have found all other uh, accommodations and some people their information doesn't, isn't correct right now and we can't get a hold of them or we've used their information and there's been no response from them. So that's why the numbers don't add up right now. Um, FEMA also will have uh, case managers working with the renters on working on getting them into <coughs> other housing as uh, they go along. These, uh, it's important to realize that these are not permanent structures which your ordinances have addressed and uh, we will, <coughs> uh, FEMA actually will move them off at 18 months. That's why we look for um, progress. Also, a couple of other things I just want to talk about. We <coughs> continue to uh, request people to continue to register. The DRC is open up by the library. It will be closed on Thanksgiving, um, but otherwise it's still open 8 to 7 every day. Uh, a reminder that we're seeing more and more fraud and scams in the area. Some people are <coughs> posing as FEMA workers. Uh, just as a reminder, FEMA will never ask you for money. Um, supposedly, they're telling people that they're FEMA workers and that if you pay them, they can move your registration up or something. We, we never ask for money. Um, the fraud <coughs> hotline, if someone does uh, recognize that, is 866-720-5721. Also, we've established uh, disaster trained crisis counselors. If people feel like they need some help that under the stress, which is very, very stressful for themselves or their families, they can call 1-800-985-5990. Also, the emergency prescription program has been extended to December 15th. This is a free 30 days of prescription for anyone not having any health insurance. Uh, disaster related job opportunities, uh, if you, there are two places to look, well there are actually three. We have human resources <coughs> at the DRC that will take your application for, and then on usajobs.com, that's the federal jobs line, and if you put in FEMA, uh, Florida, It'll bring up the jobs that we're hiring right now for local hires. Also, you can go to disasterrecovery.employflorida.com. That's for state local hires. Um, also, 1217 is the deadline for disaster unemployment assistance. <coughs> so people need to go uh, and get on if they want that it started on 1014 and you can go back to 1014 and uh, recoup any uh, losses and it'll go at least until April of 2019. Uh, also, the final thing I have is on free legal advice. There is a phone number that you can call if you can't afford uh, legal advice and that it, unless you wanted to use Mr. Albritton. He's not free. He's not free? <laughs> oh, <I'm> seriously? <laughs> <laughs> the best so, things in life are never <laughs> Oh, that's a good point. Um, but that number is 1-866-550-2929 for that help. And I um, would be open to answering questions. I have one. Um, have you placed any housing units outside of particular homeowner lots? 
not yet. We're still doing site inspections for that. We are looking at, there are a, uh, a couple identified that have utilities already set up. That's the, our biggest problem. We can find empty lots, but we have to have utilities. And so um, we're not, we can't put utilities in. But there are, have been a couple of lots identified, and we gave it to Mr. Donahue, who's our HEP housing uh, specialist, and they have taken some inspectors out to look at those. When you say you can't put in utilities, yeah, uh, have is that just a rule? Because obviously... It would just take us too long to get them, to run. Get them run and to get it set up and to bring the units in. Yeah. It would just take too long in our experience. Just That's not... Them. Yeah. Well, well, my other cost. question was, is there anything available, and it's kind of a personal note because just to be full disclosure here, I have my parents living with me oh, who well. are from Bay County. But You'd like to get them a trailer? <laughs> yeah. Is there a problem? Because I'm sure I'm not the only person in this uh, situation where we have people that are housing <coughs> others that lost homes. No, they would just have to call FEMA back up and say that they don't have anywhere to live and they need to get something, someplace to live. Well, I think they're, they're pretty comfortable right now. Oh, well, then they're they good. Don't want to <laughs> we don't want to inter interrupt Could you bring me from all the I live in the front yard. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Ann, for all you're doing. Okay. Next item, Mayor, we do have someone here from SBA that may want to give us a presentation tonight. Uh, good evening, Honorable Commissioners. I am Tamim Chaudhary from the U.S. Small Business Administration. I believe I've briefly spoken to some of you, but not all of you. I wanted to kind of provide an overview of what we're doing right here in your county. Um, Small Business Administration, we offer the low-interest, long-term loans to homeowners, renters, businesses, and nonprofits. The word business sometimes throws people off, but it's quite crucial that people fill in the loan applications if they're referred to us from FEMA. We work hand in hand with FEMA. We're right there at your uh, Disaster Recovery Center at Memorial Library and in uh, Weewa Hitchka also. Um, homeowners may receive up to $200,000 for the primary residence if it's damaged with an interest rate as low as 2%. Homeowners and renters may both receive up to $40,000 for personal property damages such as vehicles, and we've seen so many cases of flooded vehicles here. Um, and once again, interest rate as low as 2%. Now, going to businesses and nonprofits, they don't need a FEMA referral. They can come in straight to our desk and talk to us. Businesses may receive up to $2 million. Now, that's the cap, but there's no minimum that I'm aware of. So whatever the business needs, we can try and accommodate. The interest rate may be as low as 3.675%. We also help out nonprofits. Once again, $2 million, but the interest rate is lower. It can be as low as 2.5%. And by nonprofits, I'm also including uh, churches. And we've all seen so many churches, just the decimated would be the right word for it. Um, there are no application costs. Currently, as of November 16th, we have uh, 366 loans worth uh, $23,612,000 that have been approved for Gulf County residents. These include uh, three, 347 homes and uh, 19 business loans. However, I do want to add in that out of 5,300 FEMA referrals we have received, um, we've only received 1,124 applications. So that tells me that a good number of homeowners and business owners are not considering this. But it totally goes to their advantage. Going back to homeowners and renters, say if the application is denied, the loan is denied because of, say, low credit worthiness, et cetera, et cetera, the case goes back to FEMA. FEMA looks at their other needs assistance funds to see if, okay, Mr. Smith didn't get an SBA loan, can we help him out with the other needs assistance? So if the homeowner or renter, they're not filling it in, you're really kind of blocking yourself halfway to all the federal tax dollars that should rightfully go to you. And f even for businesses and nonprofits, like I was saying earlier, there are no application costs. So it may take, say, two to four hours every time if you're a business or a nonprofit because <coughs> you do have a good number of documents to submit. 
but for homeowners, renters, it's a half an hour of your time. So my message to you gentlemen would be please pass on the message that if you have been referred by FEMA to SBA for a loan, please take the time to fill this in. We're here every day, um, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Just walk right in. There are customer service reps with my logo right here, just ready to help you out. We're here in uh, your city and also in Wewa Hitchka. Um, currently, our deadline stands on December 10th, so we'd ask everyone to please consider filling this in before December 10th. That's your physical damages. And we also have economic injury loans. That means your business is just fine, but no one's coming in after the hurricane. So those loans are, uh, the deadline is July 11th. So the same terms apply. That's pretty much my overview. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have at this time. The only question I, or I'd like you to commit to the, maybe the 90 second spill on the caveats that are tied to spending that you just don't give the people the money, correct? You're very right, Commissioner. The caveat would be it has to go towards repairing your home, repairing your business or your nonprofit. Uh, that could include anything, as in like um, your real estate, your inventory, but it can't go towards a non-disaster expense. So they would have to submit receipts or something? That, is that how it that, works? That basically goes to the benefit of the applicant. We ask them to keep the receipts. So in case in the future there is some sort of an audit process, it just goes to your benefit. Because keep in mind, uh, the federal government can't duplicate benefits. If you're receiving uh, the same uh, amount of money from your insurance settlement, you can't legally be claiming the SBA loan as well. There's that, that's double dupli that's duplication. But you, so you do, or do you do not give give all the money to them up front? We'll totally give them up front, but at the say, um, let's just pick you, sir, for an example. Say we give you a hundred thousand dollars as a loan. Uh, but when the insurance settlement comes in, SBA will look into that money to see, okay, how much did the insurance pay, pay you, and what's the uninsured part? That's the part that SBA is going to cover. Okay. I'll leave all of you my contact address just in case you have any future follow-up questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the next item we have, Mayor, is a reference to triumph funds. We've had a discussion in the last few meetings. I uh, did have a good discussion with Jason Choked in reference to uh, the process of turning an application. I also had a conversation with the county. Um, right now, what we're uh, preparing to do is the county is submitting an application, to my understanding, for a 20% loss uh, calculation for this year and trying to do it over a multi-year plan. Uh, what that would equate to, to the city is roughly 20% of our major taxes and with our water and sewer revenue, that would be about 1.3 this year if you took out your Avalorn taxes because you should get your full amount this year. 20% next year calculated is, is roughly $1.6 million. That's the pre-application process, just getting the ball rolling, working with the county, trying to get something submitted on that. Any questions on trying? Uh, the last time of an old business, I did have a conversation with uh, Commissioner Langston. He's unable to be here today for obligations from work. I uh, wanted to see if, he, if there was a possibility of moving the meetings up with some conflicts he will have in the near future. And see if the board was interested in moving the meeting times up. I'm fine. I know you can show up the meeting. You probably spoke with him. Yeah, I'm fine know. with it. Okay. So you're okay with moving them up to 12 o'clock on the same day? That's right. Yeah. Can we get that in a point? It need to be done in a form of a motion. So moved. We got a motion from Commissioner Hoffman. Second. Second from Ms. Lowry. Any opposition? Motion carries 3 0. Okay. Uh, on the new business, Waste Pro contract. Um, indication was a few weeks ago I did attend a county meeting, and it looks like they are going to be going out to bid for uh, waste services. We need to be start thinking about um, our transfer station took a major hit from Hurricane Michael pretty bad shape before the storm it's in real bad shape now uh, I'm not sure how that comes into play with the transfer station that is currently being used I believe it's on county property and being maintained by waste <coughs> so we need to get our thoughts together as to uh, how you would like to proceed our contract does expire <coughs> in September and I believe the county's expires is in May I think so and I believe they have gone out to bid so we need to be thinking about what you want to do so I thing is I guess if, if we're going to follow that lead we would have to 
give them notice? Do we know what the notice um, period is? We do need to go back and look at it. It was either six, I believe it was 60 or 90 days. I'd go back to verify that in the contract in there to make sure. And I'm assuming our rates would change if they are not Right now, you're under contract through September. I have to leave that to legal, but I know you are under contract right now through September, so I would assume that you would you have a valid contract through September right now. Anything from Jeff? My only thought is if the rates are going to go up for the city uh, because of the possibility of the county switching service, service to the group that may come to the county because the city is not going to entertain a rate increase. So we may want to speak directly with Waste Pro and let them know that's our plan. If the rates are going to go up, we're going to go to looking for a different <coughs> provider. Uh, I, I think they've done us a good job. I, I think the rate is fair, but if it's going to go up because they lose the county, I'm going to support the city going to a different group if it means a reduction in rates. Is it a wish the board for us too to get a copy of what the county is, is working on for the RFP that we can look at it for us to review our current contract? Is that what I think that would be helpful. Okay. All right, we'll do that. We'll be prepared to give yeah. you an update to the next meeting. do what's best for the city, you know. I haven't had any complaints lately on waste program <coughs> anybody calling me personally. So. Uh, the next item we have moving along is utility billing for October. After we produced our billing, we did see uh, several customers that had uh, damaged lines from the hurricane, uh, trees on them, things that could not get back, people out of town to be able to, with the water run for several days. Staff recommendation would be for us to uh, to allow staff to do a an average for six uh, six month average on the water bill for October, the water and the sewer. Your current policy allows us to do it on the sewer side, but the customer is still charged for the lowest tier on the water side. Uh, we request that we be able to do it for October to give a six month average on the water and the sewer, Mayor. So moved. Got a motion from Commissioner Lowry. Second. Second, Commissioner Hoffman. <coughs> Further discussion. Any opposition to the motion? Motion carries 3-0. Okay. That is all I had That's tonight. All got. John? Mayor, uh, thank you, sir. The only item I have this evening is we're requesting approval from the board for a task order from Dewberry. Uh, and, and essentially what this is is our first step <coughs> towards advertising um, our lift station repairs our control panels, our pumps, uh, everything that you know, was damaged during Hurricane Michael for our insurance and for FEMA. Uh, and our, you know, we just want to make sure all of our T's are crossed and I's are dotted uh, as we approach this because it's going to be a fairly large expense. And uh, it's just something that we feel like we should, again, get permission from the board to move forward. We're looking at a very short cycle time as it relates to uh, bids. Uh, we're hoping to get this advertised by the end of this month and received for your approval on the second meeting in December. So hopefully we can have that turned back over to the panel manufacturer and, and potentially the electrical contractor uh, to start work on either before or right after the holidays. All right, gentlemen, any questions? So what do you need us to do? Just approve for you to uh, enter yeah. into this agreement? Yes, we just need a pr uh, approval of the task order from Dewberry, uh, and then we'll move forward, you know, with that information that they produce for the bidding, and then we'll bring all that back to you guys for approval. Motion to accept. Well, we got a motion from Mr. Hoffman, second from Commissioner Lowry. Thanks, sir. Any opposition? Motion carries 3-0. That, that's, that's all I had, Mayor. Uh, well, that's it. We did, just so the board uh, knows, we did uh, complete the uh, sewer insulation on, on Aruba uh, yesterday. 
Monday we're moving out to uh, we have three other sites as part of uh, the motion last meeting from the board so we're, we're moving in that direction so hopefully the next few weeks we'll have a couple more to report back to you on uh -huh. uh, one mayor there's this act RSP 2018-14 should actually be under wastewater mr. McClam is on vacation today okay. uh, Take the lead on this case. Yeah, go and take the lead. <laughs> what we have is, if you remember, we had a consent order from the Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection, Mayor. Before the storm, we went ahead and went out to bid for it because we put it in the budget. We budgeted <coughs> roughly $115,000 to do the project. We got our bids in. The bids are higher if you turn over to page 15 and 16. Uh, we did a breakdown because part of the requirement is we have to send back the DEP telling them how much money it's going to cost. Uh, the cheapest we got for one year uh, with a three-year contract is $154,000. So we're done for you to look at tonight. I did go ahead and send a letter back asking FDEP if they could, if there's any assistance they could provide with funding or a variance to this to see if they could help us out. Because by the consent order to date, we have to do something by February. And that means spending $150,000. And as we know, we have some unknowns with our future revenue and all of our expenditures we have. So right now, staff recommendation would be to get your thoughts together. We're trying to hear back from FDEP. If they tell us we have to do something, we're going to have to come back to you to look at award a bid. I'm hoping that we can find some kind of funding source or a variance that says, okay, we'll give you an additional six months, somewhere along those lines, or to see if we can do something like um, the state revolving fund. Yeah. Like what, the, what we did before with, with the sewer lift stations, Mr. Philip Jones helped us out, fill out an application. Let's go ahead and turn that in too, just to see if there's any kind of funding because if we can get a 70-30 grant alone, that sure helps us out tremendously. So yeah. that I'd would be our recommendation. I'd say let's, uh, let's see what happens with your letter. Yeah. See if, uh, I mean, we got the bids. Yes, sir. And you sent that in with your yes, letter, I'm assuming. Yeah. So. So they've got all this, so we're waiting to hear back from them. So if we can, if we can give them a couple weeks, we need to keep it on the agenda until yeah. we resolve it. Okay. Anything you want to add, Kevin? Uh, we're pushing water out of the pond, <coughs> so we're back to discharge. <coughs> it's good. It took us a while to get to this stage. Um, so right now we're pushing the pond back down. We've got about a foot of water. Uh, we're, just, we're just gonna have to work seven days a week until we get down where we're comfortable. So we've got a while to go. That's all I got. <coughs> Questions? Kevin? All right, finance director, <coughs> nothing from him tonight. <laughs> Engineer? Nothing really to add, Mayor. Um, as of yesterday, there's still no asphalt or concrete plants up and running in Panama, so your road paving and your sidewalk project things, are, you know, they're going to be on hold until those come back online. So no real update on any of those in terms of dates, hard dates. Unless you have a question. Thank you, sir. Uh, code enforcement, police department. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have anything on the agenda tonight. Board has questions for me. As far as code enforcement, it looked like uh, Richie's been picking up some of these signs or stuff. I saw them behind the old police department. <coughs> I don't know what Richie's work schedule is or how many hours he can work. We did discuss it staff, and I had the conversation with Mr. Burke at DFC. We'll be out speaking about it. Okay. We have a map Good. number, but we're going to get another map. Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Good. Chief, uh, thank you. The only thing I would add is we've got a bid notice out to rebuild the police department. We've only had a couple of inquiries from contractors that wanted to come do measurements and look at the inside of the police department. So if you all know anybody that does electrical work, Sheet rock, flooring, any of that sort of stuff. We've got bids out. And we'd like to get some bids. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> on our city clerk, uh, she's not here tonight, of course, and just 
would like for everybody to keep her in your prayers as her husband has been having some heart problems, been in Tallahassee and ICU and everything. And uh, Ms. Charlotte's been up there, and we, all our prayers go out with her and her family. Uh, Jim, have anything to add on the Christmas on the coast? We still got it going on, right? Yes, sir. We got it going on uh, 12 8 at 6 o'clock. Uh, we definitely want to keep <coughs> the tradition going and we want to get everybody out. We're working hard to get our downtown area back functional so we have a good Christmas. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Citizens to be heard. Anyone in the audience wish to be heard tonight? Come on up. to represent um, the Pioneer Bay Community Development Corporation. And the PAC. So I have a, um, a letter uh, that I'd like to present to you, the city commissioners, and um, requesting that uh, we would be given the opportunity to use the, what's now being used as the game room in the Washington gym as a meeting space and office for not only uh, Pioneer Bay but also for the PAC. Uh, we feel it's important that we have a presence uh, over there and uh, the letter states that we appreciate all the work that you guys have done for us and, and how we'd like to continue working together and we, we think that being there on site uh, would be a good place for us to be. So, um, and we'd like to continue to work forward uh, with some of those goals that we have. So I have a letter here just formalizing our ask. And uh, I don't know who you want me to give that to, but. Jim, I know you mentioned that right before the meeting. Yes. Um, why don't you get the details on that? I will. And I'll get the details and get it out to each of you. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Anyone else? Get them hands way up as the old man can see them. <laughs> Hi, Lorinda Angel. Uh, the first, um, this is part of the farmer's market and the Christmas parade. There's going to be a special farmer's market that same day. It'll run from 9 to 3, and we're working, and Chamber of Commerce, we're working with businesses to have open houses and to make it just a full Christmas day downtown. So we're encouraging everyone to come out and please shop local. Um, <laughs> It's expensive to put a store back together. Right. Um, and that was the first thing. The second thing, um, the um, next on the Thursday, a week from this Thursday, there's going to be a seminar out at the Citizens, I mean Senior Citizen Center, and it's it, the chamber is sponsoring that, and we're going to have a presentation by a public um, adjuster, an insurance. Um, lawyer and another person who has a specialty in this, but it's to let people know when dealing with their insurance companies, because we've getting a lot of complaints about insurance companies that I'm going, I have the same complaints guys, I can't help you with that. So we put this together to, so, to inform people what their rights are and also what they shouldn't do, okay, if they want their insurance to come through. So that's going to be at the Senior Center, Center on the 29th from 6 to 8, and there will be refreshments since it's during dinner time. Okay, okay and we'll get some more information out on that. Thank you. All thank right, you. thank you. Anyone else? Come on up in the back. <coughs> I'm going to state your name. Chris Brumball, 107 Monica Drive. regards to uh, 103 Monica Drive, based upon the city ordinance of uh, 387 nuisance, which has been in effect since October 2nd, 2007, 30.27 defines, and 103 Monica is basically going up against number 11, number 19, Subsection A, number 21. Of the <coughs> Several issues has come up. Run the generator automatic, and so 
sometimes during the day, and this is before the storm and after. I think during one of the storm meetings I came in here about this. To get the effect, at night it gets so quiet, you know, you don't hear a lot of cars and stuff like that. I was just outside and you could hear it from that door right up there. But if you go down the back street to the high school, third house on the left, you just stop with your window down, you know what we're talking about. <clears throat> as far as other things, the getting the water free. I know that y'all went out there before, the city did, before the storm. You cut the water off, <coughs> cut the power, got the power cut off where he was stealing it. But now he's getting his water down at the soccer field. I followed him. He's riding a bicycle down with a little red wagon behind it with three of these big water jugs, fountain jugs, and three smaller jugs in his front basket. He rides down to the soccer field, but he has to push it back because it's so heavy. Now, I don't know what he's using the water for, washing clothes, using it in his toilet. But if he uses a toilet, he's not being charged service, charged for sewer. No. So where's the sewer going? Is he paying for it? No. After the storm, that big debris pile out there, some of it wood, very little, the others were black plastic bags which started getting opened up by dogs or whatever. Anyway, they picked up the limbs and everything and then two days later they came back and picked up this pile of black bags. So he's not paying garbage service, we know that. Waste probes are first up to us. <coughs> last meeting I was at. The backyard has not been touched as far as debris. He's made a little path from the gate to the back of his house where he has a generator, some blue, blue looking canvas tarp of some sort. Anyway, there was a lot of free services he could have got to come clean his yard if he couldn't do it physically. There's three people living there. Um, so he hadn't even brought the first piece of debris out of his backyard. My thing is, well, plus he's got a lot of small dogs, little ankle biters, yelp like crazy. He lets them out three or four times a day. <coughs> There's a lot of profanity coming from that residence. Direct, directed at small kids. A couple days ago, I think the police department was called to it. A woman comes out there and uses a bunch of profanity about the kids. Stan Price. Can't even let his granddaughter ready to play outside because occasionally they'll come outside just to cuss them up a storm and they don't care who cares who listens to it. Now, is the city gonna go back over and clean this thing up again like it did before? With my tax money involved? I hope not. But we gotta do something. Justin Combs here, he lives right next to him. Father Lou lives next to him on the other side. I live at 107, which is on the other side of Father Lou. Father Lou takes his hearing aids out at night, so he's pretty lucky, but we don't. So some action's gotta be taken because it's depreciating our value of our property. Plus the profanity with the small kids out there and everything, it's not a good setting, so. We go outside, just listen. If you can't hear it from there, drive down the road, three houses down, including the one on the corner. Talk really your window down, you'll know what we're talking about. Thank Chris, you. I know y'all y'all have been dealing with this for a while and, and I, I hate it and uh, almost to me, I don't want to say too much, but it seems like it's been a battle. Um, I don't know if we should talk about it here at this public meeting, but what our, might, our next steps might be there. Um, it, Power is available, water and sewer are available. Um, so he's basically still in our still in sewer services. I know the school paid for the water because they got the soccer field now. And I haven't said anything to Jim. I want to see something with Sissy Worley because she pays the bills. This is the first time I've heard about uh, the ongoing. I, I knew about the first yeah. the 
previous it had, issue. It hadn't stopped. You know, before the storm, he was running generators and not picking up his trash, and y'all had to go out and clean it out. And he just don't care, I guess. But, uh, I really don't know why the hell the falling can't do something. Where's the sewer going? <coughs> Not having garbage pick up those bags started to get me a rank at one time. Jim, what happened when we leaned on the health department last time? Slap on the wrist and went went on with it or just the last thing after we cleaned it up uh, right before the storm, the last thing was we have to call for another uh, code enforcement hearing. Uh, we did have a conversation before the meeting trying to weigh what our options are, so if you can, if the board will allow um, the city attorney and myself to sit down and get with Mr. Burke, if we can get us a plan before the next meeting, kind of give you an update as to what we need to do. It, we've, we've stopped advancing forward due to the storm, but we need to get back on it. Should our special master be handling some portion of this, or, or it, should we just allow our attorney to handle it or go out? I mean, I, I don't know. I just need, we need some advice. And, so we can help these <coughs> residents. As Mr. Anderson said, we had a discussion about this prior to the meeting. If the board would allow me for the next meeting, I'll come up with some um, proposals and suggestions of the routes to go. Um, once a decision is made on which route to go, it may involve our special master. But a special master act, it ultimately just acts as a judge to determine if you violated the code <coughs> ordinance, what have you. So, um, it may involve him at some point um, because that was in his role. But at this point, if I could have um, to the next meeting, and I, my hope is that Jim and I and uh, Mr. Burkett will be able to develop some suggestions for the board to provide a long term solution. My input on this is we have a lot of options available, and I don't think. are going to back up, they're going to back up in his toilets. Um, I want to remind the, the staff and, and the citizens that our job up here is to work hard for the people in the city that are doing right. So when we have someone that is occupying a house with no power, no water, stealing water, then our job then becomes to protect the ones that are doing right. So. I'm familiar with that house. I'm 64 uh, years old. I got up, my wife worked at Duke Energy, she was out of commission. I'd go there and cut limbs down, drag limbs out. My yard's neat, clean, not this one. Oh, I, I know, I mean the house, but I'll just say it, the house has been used for a bunch of meth heads, and I've had it, I've heard enough. There's, there's too many good people living there having to put up with this, so the city, now going to move forward with doing what we should be doing and following all the guidelines. I'm not saying we're going to work outside of any legalities. The police department, I'm going to ask the chief that he goes ahead and looks at trespass warning this person or persons. Uh, speak to Jim Norton, get this, this uh, school <coughs> approval. We'll trespass warn them from the soccer field. We'll trespass warn them from any city property that has water will let them know we're not going to allow them to steal the water uh, we're just not going to do that it's not as if it's someone in need of water uh, because of the storm i mean we have went out of our way to help people but i'm not going to help this uh, and when i heard this now two meetings in a row i will ask that the clerk or jim make this come back each meeting as old business see it on our agenda and I want us to discuss it each time we meet we can have an update on what have we done and then you and the other residents nearby if you feel like we haven't done something bring it back up one thing that I spoke to Jim and the attorney about today if we need to we will pass an ordinance an emergency ordinance forbidding <coughs> all generator use now that the storm is over the people that are using generators have no power right. and and I'm in no way saying that we're not going to allow the homeowner to run a generator what I'm saying is we'll use this tool as a way to show
shut that particular generator off. In other words, we'll we'll make a an ordinance that says if you're going to run a generator now, you have to have a permit from the city. We'll give anybody a permit you, other you, than that yeah, person. You used to before the storm. <laughs> okay. you used to storm is an excuse. So, so. We're going to start thinking outside the box, and we're going to solve this problem. All right, that's time. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the public? Come on. Chester Davis, and I'm speaking on behalf of Waste Control. Uh, I, I wasn't consulted about the spin on the general until tonight, but uh, our contract for Waste Control is based upon the city alone, not the county. Uh, when that contract was uh, uh, produced for the city, matter of fact, the county piggyback off the city. The only difference, I think, is that the city has a better contract than the county, simply because the city is mandatory, the county is not. Um, the other issue that you're going to have is the uh, fact that you have a, 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 a dump site that's on county property. That contract, I think, deals with the fact that for so many years it was supposed to be turned over to the county. So that contract is still going to be in effect no matter who gets to be it. The Waste Pro will still be able to handle that, that, that uh, place out there until I think the 10-year mark is going up. It's supposed to go to the county free, free then. But uh, I think it will also impact the way that uh, the collection is done, but not it shouldn't affect the city at all. I think sometimes we're not looking at the, the totality of what the city contract deals with because of the fact that <coughs> no hands-on, uh, the city got the best contract in the state of Florida, simply because the, the waste pro only charge thirteen dollars plus per cart. City charge eighteen. Ten percent for the collection fee plus you got a percentage on dumpsters, and we pick up the city free. So, you know, it's a different contract than the county. We only pick up the fire station and some of the emergency places for the county. So, uh, you know, it's a different contract, different time set. Uh, we don't have to lose the contract simply because the county might decide. And they haven't said they was going to go anywhere. They just said they were going to put it up for bid, meaning that there might be some dissatisfaction somewhere. However, they haven't come and talked to us about what those dissatisfaction might be. Uh, so uh, we're hoping that... Uh, that the city will you know, maintain that contract with simply because I think we have about five of the employees, six of the employees that lives inside the city limits of Port St. Joe. We need to consider that also. So uh, it would have an impact. Uh, I'm not just speaking for my job's sake, but I'm speaking for the fact that when that first contract was drawn up, I was part of it. And I know that there was a percentage, I know there's supposed to be an increased percentage per year, uh, but that was dealt with in that contract. But I'm sure if you bring waste pro to the table, it's essential that we talk about it before any decision be made. I appreciate that. Well, I can assure you, Chester, that, that uh, and I, I hope you didn't uh, misunderstand my comments earlier. I'm all about saving a dollar, but I like waste pro. I've been happy with waste pro. I hear very few uh, disgruntled people with uh, waste pro. I would prefer to keep waste pro uh, in the city. <coughs> their price does not go up if the county goes a different route. I don't think it would. I think we'd be able to, you know, subsidize some things here and there. Simply the county has a different type of setup. And like I say, with the county, if the county went mandatory, it'll be a different setup right. altogether. Right. But they're not mandatory. Yeah. I'm with you the whole way. Okay. I'll renew tomorrow as long as our price stays the same and our service is just as good as it's been. I'll convey that. Anyone else in the public? Anyone else? All right, commissioners, I'll start with you, Commissioner Hoffman. Uh, I have a couple of things. First is I would like to uh, request that our city workers, as far as the non-essential city workers, be uh, allowed to leave tomorrow at lunchtime.
motion that Commissioner Hoffman. And just to clarify the motion, uh, when I say non-essential, I think we already have a list of non-essential personnel. I would ask that our uh, uh, department heads um, look at that <coughs> list and if we can uh, get a couple more people off, uh, I'll leave that up to you, uh, the leaders and uh, the heads of the departments. Uh, if there's someone on the list that can go home a little early, uh, send them home. And then uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, when Christmas comes around, I'm going to ask that we do the same thing kind of do it with if the people had to stay we need to try and get them home the trip you know the day Box before christmas right. yeah. yeah that'll be doing it kind of like the state does all right we have a motion and we have a second with commissioner louder yep second any further discussion any opposition to the motion motion carries three yes all right what else yeah that's all i got the only thing i've got uh guys is I know we've talked about it in the past and we've had some issues with it, but uh, speaking ordinance, um, we we need something uniform um, to where this person's not getting this amount of time to speak and this, another person's getting allotted less time uh, to maybe protect us from liability um, and to, just to show fairness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to see, I'd like to hear you guys that you guys find would do with that something like that and asking the attorney to draw something up i have looked at what the county does and i think i would like to piggyback on something similar to what they do i, I could um present something at the next commission meeting for the board to consider and then we can take it from there the board that's the board's pleasure I'll do it and i'll i'll follow mayor's recommendation and present something um, substantially, similar, substantially the same as the county. All right, anything else? That's all I have. Uh, I've got one thing. Go Seminoles! Oh, I heard there ain't no Gator fans here. Huh? Everybody have a great Thanksgiving.